we have a 45 year old smoker he has history of 10 pack years of smoking he presents with wheeze and shortness of breath for 3 months okay so we are dealing with a chronic case he has presented with wheeze and shortness of breath for 3 months lft showed fev1 of 70% okay so force expiratory volume is reduced to some extent fev1 by fvc is less than 70% or in other words it is less than 0.7 of the predicted now the bdr test bdr means bronchodilatory reversal test it showed that there is eight percent increase in fev1 so after a short acting beta agonist was administered this patient's fev1 increased by eight percent from its previous reading and this patient's dlco is reduced so question is asking what is the most likely diagnosis right so whenever we have these respiratory patients the most important thing is to distinguish between obstructive versus restrictive lung disease and for that basically we are looking at fev1 by FVC ratio, right? If this ratio in a case where you are suspecting a lung disorder, right, if it is more than 0.7, that is suggestive of two scenarios either the patient is normal or the patient is having restrictive lung disorder, right? On the other hand, if it is less than 0.7, it is suggestive of patient having obstructive lung disorder, right? So, in this case, it is a case of obstructive lung disorder fvc and fev1 by fvc is less than 70 percent or 0.7 so patient is having obstructive lung disorder clear okay now uh, how do you distinguish between this normalcy uh, and the restrict restrictive lung disorder when fev1 by fvc is more than 0.7 in that case you will be looking at the fvc fvc may be reduced though the ratio is preserved fvc may be reduced and the total lung capacity may be reduced in patients with restrictive lung disorders right tlc may be reduced in normal person, all the lung volumes are normal and FEV1 by FVC ratio is 0.7 plus. In a restrictive lung disorder patient, the lung volumes are reduced, your uh, total lung capacity is reduced and FEV1 by FVC ratio is preserved, right? It is more than 0.7. So, in this case, it is a typical obstructive lung disease that we are talking about and we have to differentiate between COPD and bronchial asthma, two important obstructive lung diseases, particularly when presentation is chronic, right? COPD versus bronchial asthma, that two one patient is presenting with wheeze, dyspnea and cough. Now, how do we distinguish that between these two? Both of them are obstructive lung disease. The COPD is associated with non-variable obstruction and asthma is associated with variable obstruction. So, this variability is what we are trying to document by giving a short acting beta agonist to the patient. So, we ask the patient to inhale a short acting beta agonist. This is what we call as bronchodilator reversibility test, BDR test. If it is not possible to follow the short acting beta agonist, maybe you can also give a short course of steroid that is an alternative, but mostly we follow this only. So, after a short acting beta agonist was given, we will repeat the FEV1. Now, if FEV1 increases by more than 12 percent, that is how we define asthma, right? So, if FEV1 increases by more than or equal to 12 percent, in that case, we call this case as asthma, right? That is classified as asthma. If FEV1 increases less than that, FEV1 need not be stand still. Like right? when you are giving a SABA, FEV1 may increase even in patients with COPD, right? So, FEV1 increase by less than 12 percent, then you will call it as COPD. So, in this case, the FEV1 has increased by only mere 8 percent. So, this does not satisfy the diagnostic criteria for bronchial asthma. So, the right answer here is COPD. Our interstitial lung disease is a restrictive lung disorder, pneumonia, Okay, well, doesn't fit in the picture. Bronchial asthma, we did not satisfy the diagnostic criteria. So, the right answer in this case is COPD. Okay.